this is Amanda from The Fundamental Home, and I have started a series of videos on my YouTube channel to answer questions that I frequently get about how we feed our family. In this video, I'm gonna be answering a couple of different questions that I have gotten. Um, recently, the blog, the blog, the vlog, the videos, the YouTube channel has gotten a lot of attention, and so I'm getting a lot of questions over and over again, and I just wanna make sure that I'm covering them um, so that folks who ask the same questions, I don't have to keep answering the same question over and over again. So one question that I get pretty frequently is what about milk? Well, here's the deal with milk. Um, we are not huge milk fans. I mean, we do get milk from time to time. If you watch the videos here and there, I think I might've gotten some milk. It's just not something that we get often. When we get it, it's like, oh yeah, look, there's milk. And then we drink it and then it's like, oh yeah, we really don't like milk. And then there's no need to get it again for a while. Um, it's just one of those things. My kids are all older, they're not small children. Nobody, if anybody like had a taste for milk, I, I do feel really strongly about listening to your body. And if any of my kids were to say to me, mom, you know, I've really been feeling like I need some milk, I would put milk on my list to make sure we're getting some. Cause I think that if you really are desiring something that your body needs it. So it doesn't happen though. It really doesn't. I can't, I can't remember a time that anybody's ever asked me for milk. They've asked me for other things, but not milk. So um, that's just one of those things that, I don't know, I don't know that it's necessary for a body. I, I just don't know about that. So, and so far so good, we do well with it. So we're just not big fans of milk. We do get it from time to time, it is expensive. I do have a video where I share about how we use evaporated milk in cooking. And a lot of uh, recipes that call for milk, you can substitute other things. Uh, more often than not, especially in baking, I'll use sour cream. And if, if I need it more liquidy, I'll add a little water to the sour cream. Um, sour cream and yogurt are really great options. And we do buy yogurt and we do buy sour cream and I do buy butter. It's not that we don't have any dairy, it's just milk in and of itself is not one of our favorites. So that's how we handle milk. Another question I get a lot is, why do you keep flour in the fridge? And I always wondered why people ask me that because I thought, doesn't anybody watch baking videos <laughs> like you really um i just thought like a lot of moms understood that you want if you make pastry doughs this is why i do it if you make a lot of pastry doughs pastry doughs are best if all the ingredients that you use are cold so i keep shortening in my fridge i keep flour in my fridge because what i make most often in terms of pastry dough are pie crusts and biscuits and i use and of course butter is automatically in the fridge so i keep those things in the fridge just for my use and, um, but I had a couple people comment that they thought it was from bugs from getting uh, flour at the discount store. Well, let me say this. First of all, I've never found anything with bugs in it at my discount store. I have, however, found things like that at a regular grocery store. So, I mean, I think it could happen anywhere, whatever store you buy. That being said, I've never found it in flour. And most of the time I get my flour from Aldi. I don't get it from the discount store just because a lot of times they don't sell what I'm looking for and Aldi is just as cheap. So it, it, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So we normally get it from Aldi. So no, it's not a bug issue. Definitely not. It is just that I make pastry flour or pastry doughs, I should say. Another question that I get pretty often is, um, can I see uh, foods that you make or a menu plan? Well, I have a ton of videos on the different foods that I make. I also have some blog posts on it at thefundamentalhome.com, which I will link up here. If you go to thefundamentalhome.com, um, definitely explore the site because I have meal plans on there. A lot of times, not every time, but a lot of times when I put videos with grocery hauls, I try to very soon afterwards share the meal plans that I have that go with that shopping video. And then I link all of the recipes, either my own recipes and videos or things that I've gotten from Pinterest, and I link them into the meal plan so you can see exactly what I'm eating. So if you go to the, the fundamentalhome.com, you can see the menus and the meals and links to everything. But in addition to that, people always ask about lunches and breakfast and snacks because I focus on dinners. If you go to the fundamentalhome.com, and you go on the right hand side and you scroll down to popular posts, you will most likely see how I feed my family of five for hundred dollars every month, part one. Okay, that is the beginning of my blog series where I explain how we do our budgeting process, or excuse me, our grocery shopping process. 
That video, or excuse me, not that video. I, I, I confuse the blog posts and the videos because I do both. <laughs> so anyway, that post is the very first one in the series, but it's got links to all of the other parts of the series. There's five parts. Part two talks about lunch and breakfast and snacks. And essentially what it is, although it's changing a little bit, but what it is is we did it kind of continental, continental style. Our kids are older and perfectly capable of making their own breakfast and lunch. So we have a variety of items that are constantly available in my house. We always have oatmeal. We almost always have toast. We always have fruit jams and jellies. We have eggs. We have um, potatoes for hash browns and things like that. You can see the full information list there. Uh, for lunches, a lot of times we have soups. We have um, leftovers. I mean, there's... Anyway, if you go to the site, you can see all of the details about lunch and breakfast and even snacks. Snacks, we keep very minimal. A lot of times it is the fresh fruit if we have it in season. If you have questions about fruits and vegetables, please go up here to my video on fruits and vegetables because you need to see that one. Um, anyway, a lot of times uh, the snacks are pretty simple. I mean, we pop popcorn, we do um, hard boiled eggs, we have uh, baked potatoes that we like to keep around and just throw whatever goodness we have, like, you know, some salsa in it or some cheese, or if we got some leftover meat, we'll throw it in a potato. Those are the kinds of things we have for snacks. I mean, it, we keep it pretty simple. It's, it's nothing complicated. Brianna does make cookies. A lot of times people ask about sugary snacks. Um, we make them pretty frequently. I try not to buy them because we don't need them. And I just think it's better if we're going to have them, if we're going to enjoy them, we should put the effort into making them and that'll keep us from having them too often. So anyway, that's how we do um, breakfast, lunch, and snacks. And that's why when you see me talk about a menu plan, I usually just plan the dinner. Uh, however, I will say this, my boys are getting older Ricky's in college. When I when I wrote the blog post, it was a couple of years ago, I think. I can't remember. Brian was in school, but he was working, but he wasn't working as much. So it was it was a little bit different. Ricky wasn't in college yet. He was home. Brianna was home. And my husband came home for lunches. Since I wrote the blog post, <coughs> excuse me, Brian now works full time. Ricky's in college full time and works. And so the boys aren't around as much for lunch. So I am finding myself having to pack a whole lot more lunches than I used to. So I'm actually in the process of kind of revamping it because I'm noticing that they're kind of getting lazy about it and not always remembering to bring their lunch. And then that stresses me out because I'm mom. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking because I've seen it already. They're old enough to do their own and you should just let them starve. I know, but I can't. <laughs> so, I'm not going to. I'm going to revamp the process and make sure they have a nice lunch packed. And when they move out of my house, they're on their own. But as long as they're in my house and I'm their mother, I'm going to make sure they got a lunch and I'm going to make sure they have it packed and take it with them. I do not do that for my husband, and I will tell you why. Because years ago I tried to, and he told me no. <laughs> so he doesn't like to take, he works in a grocery store, and he doesn't like to bring food into the grocery store. It makes him feel uncomfortable. <clears throat> well, he works, it's, it's more than a grocery store. It's got groceries and other items in it. So anyway, so he doesn't like to bring food into the grocery store. He prefers to either come home for his lunch or just wait until he gets off because he's usually off maybe at one o'clock, maybe two. So because he comes home so early, that's how he feels about it. And I am not his mother, so I will not tell him what to do. But it's always available if he wants it. <clears throat> Our neighbors are working on a house next door, so... If you hear saws, that's what's going on. Anyway, so there's that. We are revamping the lunch situation. I am. But <laughs> okay, so that's the last question I'm going to answer on this video. We talked so about milk. We talked about flour. And we talked about menus and meal plans and recipe things. So if you have any more questions, you can put them down um, in the comments below, but I hope that answers those questions sufficiently for you. Um, and that's it. You guys have a good day. I'll see you next time I answer the popular questions. <laughs> Bye.